What's happening guys and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. Last time I saw you, we were breaking down even more ways dinosaurs could still exist today. And with these fascinating sea creatures being discovered these days like the immortal jellyfish or the glass octopus, just a see-through octopus, okay? One has to wonder what used to roam the planet. Well, I'll tell you one thing, they were a lot bigger and a lot scarier. That being said, I'm Taylor McWaters and here are the top 10 prehistoric creatures we're glad are extinct. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Dunkleostis. Now it may sound silly because it has the word dunk in it, but this thing did not shoot threes. It actually shot its head out at you in 50 milliseconds, quite fast. The Dunkleostis was a 30 foot four long armored fish that originated from the Devonian era. Its fossil was first discovered in 1867 by Dr. David Dunkel. Dunk, dunkle, now you're getting it. So 400 million years ago, this thing was the king during the ages of fish. It swam confidently in subtropical waters, weighing around one ton, and it was kind of a bully, obviously. I mean, look at this thing. It's not his fault, he was born that way. Its massive skull was well equipped with two fangs. Each of those fangs had like two sharp points, so it almost had four fangs. Four fangs, two teeth, a lot of trouble. Those teeth would rub against each other as it grew, so as if the massive bonehead wasn't intimidating enough, he's constantly sharpening his teeth, waiting for you. Yikes. If you're looking to gaze into the face of fear, head to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. They name it Dunk. Go see Dunk. Go say what's up to Dunk. Number nine, Mega Neuropsis. Moving over to the insect side of history, ew, these guys had a wingspan of 30 inches. Insects two and a half feet wide flying towards your face. No thank you. Mega Neuropsis lived 250 million years ago. They greatly resemble dragonflies, but they weren't. They flew around before pterosaurs, birds, or bats ever did. The extinct griffin fly was discovered in 1939 in Kansas by a man named Frank Morton Carpenter. He was the insect curator at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University. They had teeth and scientists believed that they were as fast as dragonflies today. Teeth and speed plus wingspan equals I'm dead, we're all dead. Fossil remains have also shown us that these guys would spend some time around water. Imagine being in a kayak and this thing comes and just takes a bite out of your neck. No, I don't want to imagine that. I'm glad these things are gone. Save most of the animals, but also don't save all of them, you know? And before we continue on with this scary list, if you want to go ahead and give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs up for animals that are extinct. What a weird thing to ask, but you know what I'm talking about. Those likes do add up and they give us a lot of support here at the studio to then fire stuff out back at you. It's a circle of life. Hit that thumbs up, you're amazing. Thanks, back to the list. Number eight, Megalodon. Louis Agassiz discovered the Megalodon shark for the first time way back in 1843. He was a Swiss-born American naturalist and geologist. Now he discovered some amazing details about glacier activity and extinct fish. He's brilliant, but one of those extinct fish just happened to be the tooth shark, AKA Megalodon. Or as Jason Statham says, Megalodon. A little bit more menacing. It lived everywhere in the world but Antarctica, really. It favored warm oceans, but similarly to a great white, it generates heat when it moves. So it can survive most places and therefore kill you in most places. The largest recorded megalodon came in at 59 feet, about the same length as a bowling alley. If this thing were still alive today, there's no chance our boy Jay Stath could take it. Its seven foot wide jaws had plenty of trunk space for a swimmer and its five rows of razor sharp teeth ensured it didn't get out. Number seven, Seven, Arctidus smilus. Lions and tigers and Arctidus smilus, oh my. Also known as the short-faced bear. This thing went extinct only a mere 11,000 years ago. It was the fastest running bear that ever existed, so already we have trouble. Its legs were much longer than today's bears. If this thing stood up on its hind legs, it would be about 13 feet tall. That's like two of me in a bit, that's nuts. Today's bears also have different shaped toes. Today they have pigeon toes, but back then these guys had straight forward facing feet, so they were athletes. These guys were doing 200 meter hurdles. Biologists conclude that the short faced bear only ate meat, so it was basically Joe Rogan. And given the fact that it was 11,000 years ago, I feel very badly for humans that found it. Well, with its powerful nose, realistically, it would be tracking them, so it found them. It needed about 35 pounds of meat a day to survive, so one Christina Ritchie ought to do it. That's a lot of porridge for one bear. Number six, Europe Terida. 
We look now to the largest scorpion to ever exist. Part of the arthropod family, insects, spiders, and crabs, all that gross stuff. It was nicknamed the sea scorpion and it swam the waters about 450 million years ago. They would be about eight feet long with their claws swinging another three feet out to snip at you. So an 11 foot sea scorpion is what we're talking about here. Nice. The first sea scorpion was discovered in 1899 in Melbourne, Australia. You know, the place with all the giant scary stuff over there. Number five. Thylacosmolus. I saw an opossum a couple weeks back, like outside in real life. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I had no idea what the f I was looking at for numerous minutes. Marsupials are fascinating but odd creatures to see with your own two eyes. But back five million years ago, they were much more of a threat and a little bit scarier looking. Thylacosmolus looks a lot like a saber tooth, but it was part of a group called Sparasodons, a cousin to our marsupials now. Its name translates to terrible pouched knife, which sounds excellent, and it used to live in what's now South America. Elmer Riggs discovered the remains in 1920, and only recently have we figured out that it wasn't a cat, although it might look quite similar. Its teeth are intimidating, but this beast didn't have incisors. Its lower jaws weren't fused together either. These teeth were triangular in shape like a claw rather than a flat blade-like tooth. Either way, I'm happy not having this thing take a bite near my neck. Let's keep it that way. Go away. Stay in history. Number four, T-Rex. Of course we have to mention a T-Rex on a list of creatures we're glad went extinct. Tiny arms, massive head, loud scream. We've seen Jurassic Park, come on. About 70 million years ago, this big fella would roam what is now North America. And on average, it would be about 20 feet tall, eight tons, stretching a haunting 40 feet long, and its jaws are the main bread and butter here. We laugh at this thing for not having long arms, as if it even matters. 50 to 60 razor sharp serrated teeth, about nine inches long, would help it digest five 500 pounds of meat in one serving. Henry Farfield Osborne sounds like a Marvel villain. He's actually the president of the American Museum of Natural History, and he named the behemoth back in 1905. The name T-Rex comes from the Greek and Latin words meaning tyrant lizard king. If you thought the only lizard king was Godzilla, think again. Number three, Elasmosaurus. First discovered in 1868, a military doctor in Kansas found this creature's fossil, passed it along to American paleontologist Edward Cope, who named it the plesiosaur. Its neck contained 71 vertebrae, and it was super long, which came in handy during those deep dinner dives. And when I say long, the Elasmosaurus was about 50 feet in length, so it didn't need to get that close to the surface of the water to get some air. There's people out there that actually believe that the Loch Ness Monster is just one of these things still lurking about. Its teeth were sharp enough to eat anything Thing that it could fit into its mouth. And just two years ago, scientists have unearthed the largest known elasmosaur. This thing has been sitting there since the Cretaceous period waiting for us. And I sure hope we don't find any more because one water dragon is enough for me. Number two, Leopleurodon. Translating to smooth sided teeth, the Leopleurodon was anything but a smooth sailor. It was a massive marine reptile from the Mesozoic era discovered in the 19th century. It was excavated in France back in 1873 and all they had was three teeth, hence the smooth nickname. But when it was featured in 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs BBC series, it was shown as this massive 80 foot long pillosaur. But they were basing that size off of its skull, which we now know is much larger than the rest of its body. It's normal. Pliosaurs were the apex predators in Europe. 160 million years ago, most of it was covered in shallow water, and it used its four flipper feet to stalk its prey, and researchers believe that its snout was a key asset in hunting. They didn't have any gills, so they did need to come up for air every now and then. But imagine seeing that today. I see a turtle in the water and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wait it out for a bit. Number one, Titanoboa. I'm not a snake guy. I'll start by saying that. Spiders, sure, whatever. Snakes? get lost. I don't like the way they wrap their body around you and squeeze like anacondas. It's so scary. But 60 million years ago, the movie Anaconda would have been a lot shorter. The movie would have been like six minutes long. In 2004, its remains were discovered after an excavation of a coal mine in Colombia. It was found in rock dating back to 60 million years ago. And after studying several of its fossils, scientists believe the average size was 50 feet long and three feet wide. It was the largest known predator on the planet after dinosaurs went extinct until 40 million years later when the megalodon popped up. 
That's a pretty large window to be ruling the earth. Next time you see a garter snake, imagine it's the size of your garage and then have a panic attack like I did scripting this list. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Those are the top 10 prehistoric creatures we're glad we don't have to deal with today. But before you head out, drop us some comments down below. This is a pretty open channel in terms of videos and themes, so we wanna hear from you. What's making your head scratch these days? Who or what deserves the spotlight? Leave us some suggestions down below, and if a part two to this list is in your desires, show us some love and hit that thumbs up. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Life's Biggest Questions. See ya.